Okay, so we're going to take a look again at x and y intercepts and then graphing a line. So this is a unique question here. And we're going to discover as we go through why it's unique, okay? So we're again pretty good with what x and y intercepts, so I'll kind of move through that one quickly. But an x intercept um, is when y is equal to 0. In other words, when the line crosses here, right, that's our x intercept, that's when y is equal to 0. And the y-intercept, I'm just going to put enter here, is when x is equal to 0. And that looks something like this, let's say. Okay, so this is a different line I'm drawing. And that's our y, x, and this is when x is equal to 0, when it crosses that vertical line. Okay, so we use that information to help us algebraically. Algebraically just means with the numbers, when we have our numbers and variables set up together. For an x-intercept, we're going to plug in y is 0. Okay, so I'm going to say when y is equal to 0... We'll replace y with the number 0. Okay, So we've taken our y and we've replaced it with 0. When we subtract by 0, it doesn't do anything. We get 3x is equal to 0. And then to isolate for x, because this is 3 times x, we're going to divide both of the sides by 3. On the left side, we get a 1x, or they call it canceling out. We're left with x. And 0 divided by anything is 0. So the x-intercept... Okay or sorry, uh, yeah, the x-intercept is at x0 and y0. Very quickly, if they're both 0, that means the x and y-intercept are both at the origin, okay? So I've already discovered both of them. We'll prove it by doing the other one too. We're just going to show it that this is the origin here, and they're both. This happens to be one of the only situations where they're both the exact same coordinate, okay? We'll prove it by doing the reverse. I'll write the original equation again, 3x minus y equals 0, and we want to find a y-intercept. Well, that's when x is equal to 0. So we're going to replace x with 0. So we'll get 3 times 0 minus y equals 0. 3 times 0 is 0. Okay. Um, 0 minus y is negative y, so keep that in mind. Okay, We are subtracting that y still. And technically... There's technically a number of one. They call it a coefficient. It's an invisible coefficient. There's technically a one there. So to get rid of that negative, because I do always want to see why when it's a positive value, I need to divide both sides, thank you, by negative one, okay? What will happen here is the negative one divided by negative one technically creates positive one, but usually in your lingo, lingo they'll probably just say it cancels out. We get y is equal to... And 0 divided negative 1 is just 0. So we just confirmed, yeah, we got the exact same point. That's nice, but I don't know the slope. In fact, you may not have seen this yet. They call this the um, general equation for a line. Y equals mx plus b. Is this familiar to you or no? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. If it's familiar to you, what it is is b is your y-intercept. Um, anytime you have an equation of this manner, we can figure out the rest of this line. We just have to find out m, which is the slope. So slope has to do with rise over run, okay? Um, in this scenario, I'm going to give myself a little more space. I'm going to rewrite the equation down here. I have 3x minus y equals 0. There's a couple different ways I can figure this out. I already have one coordinate, so I can just try to find another coordinate. And a way I could do that is I could say, well, what about when x is 1, right? When the next value over, I can say, well, if I have x is equal to 1, what will my y value be? That's technically a coordinate. We'll have, we'll write it here, x will be 1, and we'll just have to find out what y is. In order to do that, we're going to replace x with the number 1. We get 3 times 1 minus y is equal to 0. Now, 3 times 1 gives us the value of 3 minus y equals 0. So this is a little trick here now. I need to move 3 to the other side. Technically, 3 is positive here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to have 3, and I'm going to subtract by 3 on the left-hand side of the equation. And then on the right-hand side, I'm also going to subtract by 3. This is the concept of balancing um, an equation. Okay, So because I subtracted both sides by negative 3, that's OK. We're allowed to do that in math. We've balanced both sides. Um, the reason I've done that is to create a 0. 3 minus 3, again, they'll call it canceling out, but really they've created a 0 for us. 
0 minus y. And then 0 minus 3 is actually negative 3. I'll simplify this y here. It's negative y is equal to negative 3. And again, remember, we want positive value y. So there's that, again, that invisible 1. I want to get rid of that negative. So I'm going to divide by negative 1. And whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do the other to keep it balanced. Again, they, it creates a 1, or otherwise known as canceling out. y is equal to, and negative 3 divide negative 1 is actually going to be positive 3. So what we've now done is we've found a second coordinate. This second coordinate, when x is 1, okay, so here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 3, 4, 5. When x is 1, so I go over 1, y is 3. So we do like a bingo here, 1, 2, 3. And the two things, they cross here. That's 1, 3. That's where that coordinate is. And like I said before, as long as we have two points, we can graph. So I go through the origin and through that coordinate. It's not the best straight line, but there it is. I have my graph. Now, there is one other way we could have done this, because this is why I referenced this here. If we can get into this form where we rearrange the equation so it's y equals something, we could find the slope, and as long as we have an intercept, we could just do the rise over the run from there. So I'm going to quickly demo that. If you haven't seen it yet, that's okay. You will encounter it. Um, so we've already technically answered. This is just an additional way to answer it, okay? I'm going to take that original equation, 3x minus y equals 0. My goal here is to get y by itself. I want this y by itself. So I'm going to move 3x to the other side of the equation. When it goes to the other side, it does the opposite operation. Just like with the 3 where we subtracted 3 from both sides, technically we were subtracting 3x from both sides. When I do that, I'm going to get 0 minus 3x, okay? Technically, I subtracted this side by 3x and this canceled out, but we're, we're getting a little more used to the algebra, so I kind of skipped that step. If you need me to go over it, let me know, okay, guys? But I've just moved right. it to the other side. And now I have negative y is equal to 0 subtract 3x is negative 3x. Like we said before, we always want our y to be that positive value. And there's that invisible 1 there. So we're going to divide both sides by negative 1. That will give us the positive y on the left side. Right? They cancel out or they create a 1. And this will give us positive 3x. So this one's a little trickier y equals mx plus b, okay? So I want to do a little of relating here, m. Okay, the m is the coefficient in front of the x. So I just have to recognize where my x is. Okay, here's my x. So the coefficient is 3. So my slope is 3. There's no number here. If there's no number here, do you know what number we can write? It represents nothing. What number represents nothing? Like... Zero or one? Yeah, well, one represents one, but you're right. Zero represents nothing. So I could write zero. So the B is the y-intercept. And we already know that. We've put that down. There we go. We have our y-intercept. M is three. To make this rise over run, okay? If you're familiar, if you've heard that before, rise over run, we just have to turn it into a fraction. That's why this rise over run, it's technically a fraction. And the number three... Any whole number, I can make them a fraction. I can make every whole number in the world a fraction by just dividing it by 1. When we divide by 1, nothing changes. But what's really nice about this is it tells us we have to go up 3, that's our rise, and we go over 1. So if we go back to our graph, the exact point we figured, we go up 3, that's our rise, right? We go 1, 2, 3, over 1, and there's the coordinate. And I can do the same again, 1, 2, 3, over one and there's a coordinate. Like I said, we only need two. So once we had those two, we have more than enough information. But what we've just done now is two separate ways. So I'll just do a quick recap again. We found the x and y intercept that actually ended up being just one coordinate. So what we did is we found a new coordinate. We just plugged in for any variable of x. We decided to use one. You could have used two or three or negative one or negative two. We plugged it in the equation and we solved for y. That gave us another coordinate. We plotted that other coordinate, and then we just connected the dots. The other option, right, is we could have gone from here. We take the original equation, and we set it equal to y, 
and then we relate that to the general equation they call it. So how does it relate to mx plus b? Well, b is zero, that's the y-intercept. So I plot a point at zero. And the slope is three. Well, since I need kind of two things, a rise and a run, I make it a fraction. Three is my rise, one is my run, and I go from the coordinate I've already plotted, and I go up one, two, three, and I go over one, the exact same method. So we did two different styles of solving and got the exact same answer when we did that.